Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. I wonder if the downstairs neighbor was one of the reasons the previous owners moved. Another crazy downstairs neighbor story. I bought my first home three months ago, a condo here in Philadelphia. Settlement in the middle of the month and then immediately had contractors begin a six to seven week project redoing the kitchen, bathrooms, bedrooms, pretty much everything except the living room floor. About a week into the renovation, I got an email from the community manager hired by the HOA as a full-time liaison between residents saying that my downstairs neighbor had suffered damage to her condo due to our construction. Now these three-story condo buildings have separate entrances for each six units, two on each floor. So as my downstairs neighbor, she was also in the same stairwell as me. This wasn't like a big building with long hallways where coming upstairs would have meant quite a trick. It's out her door, up 10 stairs, and she's right at mine. I contacted my contractor who apologized, said they had to do some lightweight jackhammering in the kitchen, and said he would fully cover any damage done to neighboring apartments. I went downstairs to talk to my neighbor, apologize, and explain the situation. She was quite upset and made the damage out to be much worse than the community manager had explained, saying that her bathroom walls were cracked and her marble tiles were ruined. Came away from the experience thinking she had been perhaps a little too upset, given that I was nothing but apologetic, and that all the repairs would be done for free. Contractor took a look at the damage and didn't think it was all that bad, but he would fix it anyways. Two weeks later, another run-in, stopped by the condo to see how work was going, and the workers were playing music at a loud but reasonable for construction volume as it was 11 a.m. on a Tuesday and most of the windows were open. I'd been there about five minutes before my neighbor knocked at the door. When I opened it, she was in near hysterics, saying how the music was insanely loud, how she'd been hearing multiple complaints all morning from all over, and that she was about to call the HOA president and try to have him do something about it. She went on and on for several minutes. The complaint itself wasn't the problem. It's possible the music was a tad too loud, but the reaction was so over the top as she had my phone number from the first encounter and could have easily texted me to ask them to turn it down or come up and politely asked herself. After that, I didn't hear from her for several months until I got an email from the community manager reminding me that a certain percentage of my apartment had to be covered with carpet or area rugs I replied that it was, and he said he'd gotten a complaint from my neighbor to the HOA president that my footsteps were sometimes loud. She never once said anything to me, nor texted me. Straight to the HOA president she went. This was late August. I told the community manager that my apartment was properly covered, sent him photos, and once again included my phone number, and said that I was perfectly fine if my neighbor wanted to text me to let me know. Now I've heard from her again. Again, she skipped talking to her neighbor and instead went to the HOA president. I have a meeting with her later today, and I heard her on the phone this morning still complaining about her bathroom renovations. About that, my contractors tell me they made several attempts to contact her and she never responded, so they stopped trying. At any point in the last six months, if she didn't have their information, all she had to do was come upstairs. I work from home, and clearly she knows when I'm around. I just get the feeling this is going to turn into a whole ongoing thing with this woman. And our second story. The day I learned not to judge a book by its cover. So I used to work at a very popular jewelry store. I was a salesperson and admittedly absolute trash at it. It was a very slow day in the summer, not jewelry buying season at all. And it was just me and the boss. Middle of the day, out of the blue, a woman walks in. This woman looked like your typical trailer park girl who was just walking in to look at shiny stuff, but the boss is always stressed that we should approach and attempt to help anyone who wanders in. Now at this point, I see him see her. He gives her one look up and down while he's at his desk behind the counter and looks back at his computer. Clearly, he sees what I see in her as well. He had a very well-established clientele and didn't often need to take long shots that just wander in. So after a moment of her looking around, I walk up to her. Me is me, woman is W. Me. Hi there, welcome to store name. Looking for anything in particular? W, quietly and seeming a bit overwhelmed in this store. Well, I'm looking to buy my son something nice. Me. Oh, cool, birthday? W, still quiet and a bit nervous. 
Yes, but mostly as a thank you. We've been struggling all his life with paying off debt and me not holding down a steady job, but my life is really back on track. I have a good job now, and we're living very well, and I just want to thank him for fighting through the tough times with me. At this point, I'm very taken aback and a little mad at myself. I was very judgmental of this woman before I even spoke to her, but after our little talk, which I paraphrase because I don't remember every detail of it, I actually was very proud of her. So after about 10 minutes of chit-chat, I started selling again. Me. Well, ma'am, I'd love to help you find something for him. What do you think he'd like? W, seeming much more chipper after talking with me for a while, well, he's always wanted a real gold chain, but I could never afford it. Now that I can, I'm getting that boy a gold chain. We both laugh, and I lead her over to where we keep gold chains. I show her a couple, and she chooses one she likes. This was a very nice chain, thick 14 karat gold, the works. After a bit of playing around on the register with active discounts, I got it to $3,000. Obviously, that's a lot of money, and even people who are doing well for themselves don't often have $3,000 in the bank they can just drop on a gift. Me. So you mentioned that you've paid off your debts and your finances are in good standing, so I take it your credit is much better than it was? W. Yes, much better. Me. Well, would you be interested in financing this? W. Absolutely. So she shows me her driver's license and I get some information from her. The typical stuff for a credit check. Even after our talk, I didn't expect her to get much. Being in a hole with your credit can be a serious nightmare to climb out of, and even people who've turned their finances around in a big way can still have bad credit. To my shock, awe, and glee, she was approved for $8,000 in credit. In my time at the store, I think I may have seen one other person the whole time get instantly approved for that amount. After that, we head to the register and I check her out. She even has the cash to do a down payment so that she won't be charged any interest over her payments. I give her the bag with the chain and a nice case and we walk toward the front of the store and talk for a moment. As we chat again, I think about her story and how much trouble she's had getting her life back in order and I'm not even thinking about the money I just made. I was just proud of her. As we part ways, I hit her with words I feel like she's been wanting to hear for a long time. Me. You're a good mother. W, clearly choking up. Thank you. That job made me very bitter and judgmental for a stretch of my life, but I don't think back on the bad times nearly as often as I think back to that woman. Even my boss was caught off guard that I got a huge sale on a slow day from the last person we would have expected. Seriously, everyone, don't let retail make you bitter to people based off appearances. You don't know their story. Sometimes their story's beautiful. And our next story. I guess I work here now. When I was a senior, my best friend slash girlfriend began work at a small little sushi restaurant. The owner was an old Japanese lady, really chill and lenient when the store wasn't busy. I, being a person with no life after soccer season ended, began hanging around the sushi restaurant with my girlfriend while she worked. I'd mostly just sit at a corner table, pour myself some green tea, and order an occasional nigiri to munch on. Anyway, sometime in the spring, I was doing my usual thing at the sushi restaurant when the owner suddenly collapsed. My girlfriend immediately called for an ambulance, accompanied her boss to the hospital, and threw me the keys to close down the shop. After she left, I followed the closed down instructions they had in the back when I heard the front doorbell ring. Thinking nothing of it, I stepped outside to tell whoever it was we were closed. Literally, dozens of people were lined up to order looking like a part of a tour group or something. The lady that was first in line immediately started ordering. Lady, there you are. I'll have a dragon maki, two orders of anari. Me, um, actually I, lady, not listening, and an order of your California roll. The thing about me is that at the time I was incredibly shy, especially around strangers, and I avoided confrontational situations like the plague. This was literally one of my worst nightmares. I tried a few more times to tell them I didn't work there, but they didn't seem to be listening. So instead, I just went with the flow. Me. Uh, sure, let me get that for you. And so began the most hectic and stressful hour of my life. I kind of know what goes on things since I've eaten at the store for most of the year, so I just wing it. I'm rolling shoddy rolls, I'm packing sushi rice and things, and I'm running a cash register solely on instinct. 
Finally, my girlfriend returned and the scene from her perspective must have been shocking. Dozens of angry tourists and her socially awkward boyfriend, covered in sushi rice and seaweed, frantically pressing buttons on a register. Thankfully, she took over and we got through that madness. A few days later, my girlfriend and I visited her boss and she told my boss about the whole fiasco. Her boss laughed and said she was not planning on asking me to work anyway, since I'm there a lot, and to think of that whole disaster as on-the-job training. And our last story. I'm living in your house now. Really? Make yourself comfortable in jail, lady. I'm the owner of a two-story house. I'd gone to Hawaii last week for a one-week vacation with my wife. No one was at home and it wasn't feasible for us to take dogs with us, so I gave my house keys to a good friend of mine and asked him to take care of my two dogs. This would involve feeding them, changing water, and taking them on one-hour walks daily. So his girlfriend was in town and she had no place to stay. He lives in a one-bedroom condo with two other roommates, so he messaged me and asked if I would allow his girlfriend to stay at my home for just one night. I agreed as it was a matter of just one night. Now yesterday I came back and found out his girlfriend is made dwelling in the upper floor of my house. She's been staying here for four days. I asked her to leave immediately, but she and my friend are insisting to let her stay one more week because she's in search of a job in LA, California. I called police. They came and said this would be a civil matter and I have to go through eviction process. So I'm here with an unwanted stranger in the upper floor, an a-hole friend who broke promise and pissed off my wife. So yesterday night, that squatter girl went outside to grab some dinner with her boyfriend. Me and my cousin carefully packed all her stuff in her three bags and left on our front porch and locked ourselves in the house. We also looked over her stuff from the window to make sure no one steals it. Our wait was over after two hours when girl returned. She figured it out and started pounding at our door, yelling loudly to open door, you know, typical squatter drama. We told her to go F off and we won't open the door. So finally, after 30 minutes of constant drama, she dared to call the cops. I was nervous how it would turn out. Cops arrived. Fortunately, these were different ones than previous night. First, they listened to her side. Then they came to me. I explicitly told them that I was the sole owner of the house and never allowed girl to stay more than one night. She was not only trespassing, but also living in my house illegally without my permission. B kept saying I had given permission to stay there indefinitely and now kicking her out. Officer said she has any proof of that. She claims she had some message which accidentally got deleted. Now the best part? Officer then asked her for an ID. She gave ID. Officer verified it over radio. Suddenly, they told him this B had a failure to appear warrant for months old shoplifting case. Stupid lady was arrested immediately, her stuff sent to a friend's house. Officer said that I don't need to worry and they'll take care of her. I don't require any further action. So finally, I'm relieved from that squatter and B is behind bars. What a justice boner. Now that she's out, mind if I crash at your place for a day or two?